Good day, traders. This is Rich with some weekend action on TradeStation, looking to create another platform video for you. I've been asked recently about chart setup, and to be honest with you, it's pretty simple to set up charts in TradeStation. I'm just going to go over a couple things that I noticed, and I'm actually making changes to for the upcoming week but I'll show you exactly how I set them up. I'm not gonna include my indicators in this video. That's something proprietary, and I'm not gonna be able to share those with you right now, but but I wanna share with you how you can get a nice visual look at the markets based on what you're doing and how you can help yourself see things a little bit more clearly and a little bit more quickly maybe. So let's get into it. I just have a blank workspace here for you TradeStation users. Pretty simple stuff. You just go to apps, any way you like it, hit the chart analysis. And this out of the gate, I have Zoom up. We'll just use Zoom today. This out of the gate is just fine. You could probably trade everything you need right here without even changing anything. Now, I think I changed my default settings. I don't really remember what my default chart is. I don't think this is the default chart when you click on chart, uh, what do you call it? Chart analysis, we'll call it. Um, but to get to this, we'll go over that and kind of simplify it and just go by settings and make it easier for you. So let's just get into it. I have a five minute chart on Zoom. Some people like this watermark. We're gonna remove that. We're gonna change the grid lines. We're gonna change some of the stuff up here. We're gonna change some of the scroll bar stuff and everything underneath. So all you really have to do is you can either right click, go to settings and then window. And we'll just start with the generals tab. So the auto hide here is for the scroll ball down, down below. I used to keep it on auto hide, but what I'm noticing is when I click on a chart to chart, it actually makes this movement and it's a little bit jarring uh, to the eyes. It doesn't affect anything at all, but I find that if we just keep the little bit of scroll bar here, no big deal. Um, at least we don't have to worry about that. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. So I'll just click this to on. And when you click OK, it just stays on, no big deal. But if you were to have multiple charts, and I'll show you that right now, on my normal settings, notice how nothing moved here. Watch how I click on this one. See how a little raised up, and I click on this, it raised down, raises up, nothing here, because I already set that there, raises up there. So it's a little bit more active on the chart that I would like to see. I really don't need that extra movement. Um, so with, the, with that setting set, you can, um, you know, what's on for the scroll bar, it's just static. Um, you can have it off completely. Let's say you have a screen with multiple charts on it and you don't need to scroll. I really feel like you're going to need to scroll to the previous day. And if you don't, if you, let's say you have six or 10 or 12 or whatever amount of charts on one screen, you're going to have to scroll at one point. So I recommend keeping it on, um, and just leave it at that. If you like the auto hide, create a little bit more space. I just don't think it's worth it at this particular time. So you can see your settings down here as you do it. So I were to do auto hide uh, or off. It doesn't really do much for that one. I do have right access for the price. Uh, I don't have percentage enabled. Watermark, so the watermark, yeah, they didn't even have all the watermarks for all the uh, different stocks. So you know what, just remove it. It's it's cool, it's a nice little feature. I just find it to be unnecessary. And if you hit okay, you can notice what happens. It's gone. So that's the first settings, first set of settings on that particular screen. You can go to settings windows here, or you can go to settings window here. Same same button. So we'll go to status line. Show status line. That's the line at the top there. It's pretty much right here. Um, I like to have this active, of course. Now, if you go to my original chart, I have all these selected, but if you go to my original chart, um, I have my moving indicators on here. Okay, I removed it up here, I did some testing on here, and I cleaned it up. So I have so much information on here, but do I really need all that information? Nope, I do not. Less is more in trading, you know that. So we'll go to, we'll go to status line, and we'll have the symbol, of course. The exchange, is that necessary? Um, what I noticed going back to the original one is you get the exchange right here. 
right? Do you really need the exchange in this status line? Again, nope. So we'll go back to window. You go to uh, remove exchange here, just hit remove. Last price, sure. Net change, of course. Net percentage change, I find that to be very helpful. Do we need the bid and ask? Like everything else we talked about in the past, time and sales and, and uh, market depth, you have all the information right in front of you. You don't need it there. So bid and ask, we're removing. Open, high and low. I find high to be a more important number. So I put high first, open, and then low. Uh, volume total is important as well because you can see the volume here on Zoom. And uh, the last thing is studies and strategies. That's what I showed you in that previous screen. Uh, you won't see it here, but I'll show you back on the other window. I'll remove that one completely and then say okay. So it cleans this up a lot right there. So if we go back to the original chart, we have all just we just have the last uh, percentage or percentage change, the change last uh, the high, the open, the low, and the volume. What else do you really need? If you need the EMA, let's say you have EMAs and SMAs, whatever, you can just click on here. And you can notice, notice at the bottom, um, I have average X, P, EXP, average EXP, and average EXP, and average. Those are the four indicators based on color. And you could just get your numbers just like that. You don't need anything up there, up here to tell you what's going on. So right away, you're super clean and you're reducing the amount of data coming in. There's also that. And less processing, um, minimal, of course. But it's anything counts. Everything counts. Speed is key. And this might help me as well as you increase your speed. So I'm doing this now because I was going through all the things I can do to increase my uh, performance. And I'm noticing, do I really need this stuff? And I set this up a long time ago. So I'm coming back to it. And this is, I'll probably come back to it again in a few months and kind of maybe reduce to something else or change something that I don't like or change something I don't need. So let's get back into it. Settings window. We're still on status line. We got rid of the things we needed. Let's go to font. I usually keep the status line at bold eight um, and the axis label is bold eight. No big deal. Color. So color, I keep everything the same. I didn't really change anything, but what I'm going to do going forward is the session breaks. The session breaks are the breaks between days. I had problems with the grids and I decided let's change the, um, the session breaks to a different color other than the, the natural colors that it comes with. So I chose this like pink, violet, red or something like that. So if you put that in there, you can see my day breaks are now a little bit cleaner and I can see, okay, it's, there's no comparison with the grid line. So speaking of grid line, I actually made a change in that as well. I hit on window and this is going into style. So everything else stays the same pretty much. I don't really change any colors. You can change whatever you want. I mean, you can change the background of your chart to you know um this like blue color and you have like this crazy blue color you can do whatever you want whatever works for you is what it comes down to but for me i like clean i like black red green and the indicators what that's all you really need with this little purple line will kind of adjust um i'll get adjusted to that and i might change that color in the future but that's something you might want to consider too so the style the pretty much the last piece this is all it is really in charts um I have a solid grid. I want to show the grid because it's nice to show the grid, especially on big prices. You can see the whole numbers, 435, 430, 425. Now on a smaller price stock, you'll see it like 1, 120, 140, 160, 180, and 2 scenario. Um, sometimes on a Roku, you'll see a 1, 2, 3 scenario. So if we were to do that real quick, let's go to Roku. Um, I think it's a little bit spaced now because it's, 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 it's a high price stock. Let's see what Beyond does. Um, yeah, so beyond is single digit, you know, one line, 29, 30, 31, 32, 30, it's clean. And, you know, there's not much to do with anything else. Um, you could just easily, easily find your the whole number that you're looking for. So let's go back into Windows. We're on style. I changed this today. I've, I figured, what do I need the up and down lines for? Uh, now that I have that clear session break, I don't, I mean, the time, yeah, helps a little bit. But I get an I, I've seen these charts so many times that if I'm looking at a five minute chart, I kind of have an idea where I am in the day. So I am taking off the horizontal line. I'm not adjusting anything else in the style of the grid or the weight. Now you can do that. I can create this crazy weight, but I am not going to do that. Um, I don't need to. So with the 
verticals gone, it actually cleans up the chart tremendously and even makes it easier to read. So let's go ahead and hit OK on that. Boom. Now we're just looking at the whole numbers on beyond, right? Clean, 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 clean all the way down. Session break, session break. And, you know, once you zoom in on the day, you know, you see a lot more. Obviously, I have this on full screen. But if you go back to my original charts, the ones I look at, this is one day pretty much. It's pretty tight. Now, the reason I'll get into this in a second. The reason why it's so tight is because of the EMAs. Um, but before I get into that, I'll just finish up this. Uh, you know, adding indicators, right? You want to add studies. Uh, I think I talked about this in a previous video. We talked about volume, and what I'm using right now is volume average. I still think there's a better volume indicator that I would like to use. There's so many. I'm just haven't dug in, dug in enough, um, and it's giving me enough information right now. And I changed the colors on these um, from blue to green, but for the most part, you get the idea. So on Zoom on Friday, which was a pretty nutty day, look at the volume that came in. The average was a this was the average line, and how it kind of fell off a little bit at the end of the day. Um, but volume was kicking in hard, and you know when it's Volume is something I really look at right when it's about to trigger. If volume starting to pick up versus the previous candle or two, you know it could be a pretty good entry. Like this is where I got got sucked into the other day. I saw this big volume, and then I saw another candle of volume, but it, it failed on me and just dropped off in the next couple candles. So that was a little bit frustrating. Um, but we won't need to get into that right now. Uh, so this average uh, is a nice little indicator I use um, you can you know you can put it on top of it overlay it um, and do whatever you want with it so let's go ahead and go back into studies here um, and remove that so again to clarify remove some of the stuff you don't need you don't need the watermark it says zoom right here now if you want to take a nice still shot or something um, you can do that but now, if let's say you want to do some drawings, let's say you want to create a, uh, I don't know, create your own vertical line or horizontal line. Let's say you want to price in at like 432.60. You could put one there. It stands out. Then you can put some weighted average or weighted um, style on this to really make it stand. What I like to do is an edit and then set an alert one time and okay. And then you have an alert set on your um, chart. You can either do that and then you can click on it and delete. Boom, gone. Um, I just, I'm really excited about this actually because I don't know why I had vertical lines this whole time. I really don't know why I had vertical lines. I understand I can look at the clock down below or the times below to really get an idea where I'm at. Now, if I had the lines, I believe, let's go ahead and put them back in real quick. Um, it's at the half hour on this particular case. Now, if I shrink a little bit, yeah, it's at the half hour. So it does help with the half hour lines, but sometimes the wicks here, okay, get stuck in the horizontal line or the vertical line, excuse me. The vertical line, it, so it can, oh, you have to look a little bit closer. When you take that off, um, we take the vertical lines off and just have the horizontal, it really shows the wicks in more detail. So these wicks really stand out a little bit more. So you're like, ooh, wick here, failure, wick here this is a good reversal spot. Something to consider in the future for trading, by the way. Um, so if we go back to my indicators, so if I make this big, this is Boeing, so we'll put zoom on here because we're looking at zoom before. Notice the tightness compared to this. Well, I'll, I'm zoomed in, I'm, no pun intended. But I'm zoomed in on that one. But notice the nice movement here. But if we go to my other one, it's much tighter. It's much, much tighter. So what happens is TradeStation, and I believe other charting services do this as well, is that when you have these other indicators, it will smush the chart so everything fits on the screen at some point. And it tightens up. That's why you're looking at my chart sometime. You're like, wow, how does he know what's going on? Well, because these, like this 200, if it's really far away, it makes things a lot tighter and can be a little bit frustrating for sure. So if I were to copy this window, right, I'm going to just do a sample because I don't really want to lose anything at this particular time. 
and then paste it. So we'll go back to normal on that one. And then we'll open this one up big. And if I remove the 200, and then I remove this one, I remove this one, I remove this one, huh, didn't actually change anything. That's interesting. I wonder why I did it this time. I'm not gonna, well, I'll just say this. I've noticed in the past, if price is really squinched up, um, well, maybe it's because it was too big. Maybe it was, it was big enough. So let me see this again. We'll try this one more time so I don't waste your time. If I remove this, see, it moved. This, okay, the rest didn't do anything. But when it's a little bit smaller, because well, I, I have a screen just full of charts about this size, and when you have a 200 that's really far away, it can really affect the visual um, perspective of the chart. So keep that in mind when you're going forward. And I think that will give you... a um, some help when you're looking to in the future. So this pretty much covers how I set them up. I think the biggest biggest thing, which is the simplest thing, is by removing the vertical lines. It really clears it up. It really clears it up. Um, obviously, getting rid of the watermark can help. Getting rid of some of these the indicator pieces up here has helped a little bit to clean it up because all you really need is the last price. Here's look, I'm looking at the level two here, right? So I can see the price already. It, it's nice. This is more about when I'm looking at my other screen and I have six to eight charts on it and I can look at these few numbers and this really can help. So keep that in mind. So this pretty much covers the look of charts that I use. Let me know what... I might want to think about adding to my charts, um, what would make it a little bit better for myself and for you. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and comment on the video. You guys have a great one. I'll be back uh, this week and into the future if you watch this video later, and we'll continue trading and make some money in this market. Have a good one.